The internet is a Potemkin village. To kick things off, let's explain what a Potemkin village is. Merriam-Webster defines a Potemkin village as an impressive facade or show designed to hide an undesirable fact or condition. Let's break it down further. Trust me, all of this matters. Think of a Potemkin village like the set of a movie. There are impressively detailed fake buildings all around with painted walls, decorated rooftops, potted plants, realistic props, and intricate details littered about. In front of this movie set are actors and actresses dressed in period accurate clothing, speaking in accents that fit the time and place. It's all fascinating, realistic looking, and entertaining, but it's fake. It isn't real. What's being shown to you is not reality. Now if you knew going in that this is a movie set and that most of what you're seeing isn't real, this wouldn't be an issue. But a Potemkin village is made to deceive you. Let's briefly dive into the origins of this phrase. Grigory Potemkin was an 18th century Russian nobleman who, among his good and bad actions in life, allegedly wooed Catherine the Great. During Catherine's 1783 tour of new Russian possessions in the Crimea, Potemkin endeavored to show her and the foreign ambassadors accompanying her the best version of the empire. Apparently, Grigory had built up this grand facade of pretty towns in the distance on riverbanks. At stops, Catherine would be greeted by well-dressed regiments of men and serfs, all dressed up in fanciful garb to show off a grand sense of prosperity that didn't actually exist. In fact, there was a famine going on. My favorite example, though, was the exploding rockets spelling her initials. That was probably quite the sight to see. Now, recent historical evidence has led some to believe at least parts of this tale to be apocryphal, or lacking authenticity, despite being believed to be true, but the legend was nonetheless created. The term Potemkin village was set in stone. It signifies any deceptive or false construct, conjured often by cruel regimes to deceive both those within the land and those peering in from outside. Google is a Potemkin village. Do a quick Google search and within a second you'll receive a fancy facade of seemingly endless information instantly appearing before your very eyes. Incredible, right? Eh, uh, let's check it out. First you need a basic search term to show off what I mean. And it can be whatever you want. How about pizza? That's simple enough. When you search pizza with Google, you are instantly given, at the time of this video, over a billion results in 1.02 seconds. That's incredible, right? I can't wait to dig through a billion plus links to pizza and discover all there is to find out. If you count the number of results on page one, you'll see that there are nine results. That's not a lot of links right off the bat, but I guess they don't want to overwhelm you with too much pizza knowledge. Nine results on the first page. That's fine. Let's go to page two. Nearly the same as page one, this time we got 10 results in less than a second. If you were like most people today, you probably wouldn't dig any deeper than this. Usually you can find what you're looking for on the first page or the second page of results, or you kind of give up. But we're on a quest for knowledge, so we have to go deeper. When we hit page three, it's the exact same. Billions more results to go, with 10 results on the page. Same with page four and five. But when I got to page six, something weird happened. Somehow the results for pizza jumped up to 1,340,000,000 from 1,050,000,000. Did Google just discover 290 million extra pizza results between clicks? On page 24, Google still says we have 1,340,000,000 results to go. The next weird anomaly doesn't happen until page 25. It instantly drops to 1,210,000,000. I'm sorry, but where did those extra 130,000,000 results go? It's crazy how hundreds of millions of results are appearing and disappearing, moving and shifting around so quickly and so easily. Going by the math of 9 results on page 1 and 10 results on page 2 to 25, we have only seen 249 results for pizza up to this point. The rest of the pages showed the same result of 1,340,000,000 until we got to the final page. What was the final page? I mean, it had to be an insanely high number to show all the billion plus results, right? Wrong. It's page 35. On page 35, the facade completely breaks apart and reveals the total number of results, listed as 348. That's 348 results for pizza total. As in everything Google has listed when it comes to pizza web results, 348. What? What happened to the other 1,340,000,000 results? Where did they go? Why does Google say that they have over a billion results when they clearly don't? Something isn't right here. Is Google a Potemkin village? Is Google showing off an intentionally deceptive high number to impress you, when in reality it's actually hiding the true number until after you've gone through 35 whole pages? Wait a second, let's step back, let's be rational about this. 
Before we get all crazy, at the bottom of the page, Google says, in order to show you the most relevant results, we have omitted some entries very similar to the 348 already displayed. If you like, you can repeat the search with omitted results included. Okay, everything makes sense now. That seems to be the problem. I guess the 1,340,000,000 results were very similar to the 348 that were displayed. If I was a simple man, I'd say, okay, that makes sense and move on with my life. But I'm not a simple man. I'm a man that demands answers when it comes to pizza. I want Google to repeat the search with the omitted results included. And wow, when you include the omitted results, you get a staggering 1,900,000,000 results for pizza. That's 560 million more results than originally promised. They found an extra 560 million pizza results. I'm sure this time Google will absolutely give me all the results it promotes. I went through everything and Google gave us an unimpressive 53 pages. Now at the top of the page, it still says 1,900,000,000 results. But I did the math, so you wouldn't have to. In actuality, Google gave us 529 results, most of which by the end had nothing to do with pizza. How can the most widely used search engine in the world only have 529 total results about one of the most popular foods in the world? It doesn't make sense. In fact, others have already done this experiment and came up with similar results. Climate change, one of the most widely discussed major issues of our time, with 60 years of research behind it, only has 438 total results. What? How? What about football? A whopping 462 results on page 47. How about aliens? That's another subject with an unbelievable amount of research, footage, and discussion around it. How many results does it have? 146. You can do this test with anything and the results are always the same. Google is a Potemkin village. It's a facade. It's pretending to be something big and grand, and there's nothing behind it. When you really stop and think about this, it's immensely troubling. It's been in front of us the entire time, but seemingly no one noticed it. And they're really clever with how they do this. First you see a really big number, then the pages and pages of results, then the comforting message that assures you that some of the results have been omitted. After that, when you hit the final page, it essentially means the end of the line.